Good morning and welcome to Morocco. I'm Caroline and I'm going to be spending the next couple of weeks traveling around this gorgeous country with my other half Andy. This morning we're going to be taking a train journey that lasts about 2 hours 40 minutes from Marrakesh up to Casablanca. Now we are going to be joining onto an intrepid tour a little bit later on in this trip and so we're figuring that we're probably going to be doing a lot of travel on trains in second class. So we've treated ourselves today to travelling in first class and the tickets have cost us 150 dirhams each. Just trying to have a little bit of an exploration of the train before it sets off from the train station so that I'm not having to deal with, oh, she spoke too soon as the train now starts to set off. I was gonna say before I have to start dealing with the fact that it's rocking from side to side. So from what I can gather, this particular train has got two first class carriages. One of them has a corridor that runs down the side and off of that corridor are six seater compartments. And then the second carriage in, which is the one that we've got two seats in, is an open plan carriage where it's a configuration of one seat, an aisle, and then two seats. So unlike in the UK where there's quite often a designated buffet car, there isn't one on this train, but what there is is a trolley that goes through selling food. <laughs> So it's got things like fizzy drinks, and then there's sandwiches, crisps, chocolate bars, and they also serve things like hot drinks, like teas and coffees too. Again, unlike in the UK with a first class ticket, you would normally get some kind of refreshments included, but here, even if you're in first class, you still have to pay for it. But I guess the big price difference between what you pay in the UK for a first class train ticket and what you pay here in Morocco kind of offsets it. And I think even if you were to purchase the goods yourself it's still going to work out cheaper this morning we had breakfast included at our hotel and it was a buffet so we kind of stuffed our faces with that so we haven't picked up any things so i can't really comment on the quality but the vast majority of what they were selling was already pre-packaged so for example pringles so i imagine it would be just as good as you expect a box of pringles to be Socially acceptable for people to smoke in these corridors but it's not in the compartments and if you're in an open plan carriage you just have to wait until you get off the train so knowing that there were some compartments on this train I was fully expecting to leave reeking of cigarette smoke but actually quite surprisingly there's signs everywhere saying that you're not allowed to smoke and I think it's because it's all air conditioned meaning that all of the cigarette smoke would just get trapped inside of the train carriages And confirm that trying to get through the train is a little bit of a nightmare. The train doors are incredibly heavy and unlike the trains that I'm used to riding at home in the UK they're not automated so you don't just press a button where they open for you and instead you've really got to heave ho to get them open. I think so much so that someone on a previous journey has been a little bit too heavy-handed and one of the doors has come off of its hinges. The other thing that's quite interesting is that despite this having air conditioning some people seem to be leaving open the doors in those vestibule areas which is bringing through a bit of a breeze but by around about midday which is what the train's going to be riding through I can't imagine that it's got to be better than the AC.
making my way down through the train, I've ended up into second class. And it seems like there are a lot more second class carriages than what there are first. And again, there's a bit of a mixture between some that have got corridors down the side. The main difference is that the compartments off of those corridors have eight seats in them instead of six. So it's just a little bit more close quarters with smaller seat sizes. And then they've also got the open plan carriages too. And with those ones, it's a configuration of two seats, an aisle, and then two seats on the side. So again, just slightly more narrow seats, but it feels like it's also air conditioned in here too. And I wouldn't say that it's any busier in second class than what it is in first class. through the outskirts of Casablanca and um, we've just pulled into a station and earlier I was saying that the standard class compartments were just about as busy as first class and I have to say to scratch that now because standard class as I was trying to work my way back to my own seat in first is absolutely heaving now. We booked our train tickets through the ONCF's website and I know a few years ago when I first initially started looking into this trip pre-pandemic it was a case that you couldn't book train tickets online unless you had a Moroccan bank account but it seems like things have changed now and it's fine to book online which means that you don't need to pay a third party booking fee but it also means that in first class we get given a designated seat so it means that we're guaranteed to be seated throughout the journey and in fact there has been a little bit of confusion with other people in our carriage who hadn't sat in the correct seats and the people who work for the train line have come along and made sure that they've been seen to the correct seats quite often they're actually in the nice six-seater compartments in the other carriage whereas I'm really not too sure what the situation is with the standard class tickets because there's an awful lot of people having to stand in the aisles and also stand in the vestibules at the other end so if you know can you get given a designated seat in standard class or not do please leave a comment in the comments box down below We've hopped off the train, we're here now at Casablanca. I think it's Voyageurs. There's like three train stations here. None of them are within walking distance of the hotel that we're staying at because this is a really, really big metropolitan city. So we're gonna first of all try and find our way out of the train station and then I think we need to grapple with their tram systems. We found the trams, we found the ticket machines, but it would appear that the ticket machines don't like our UK credit cards. So we did pass an office right on the edge of the train station. So we're gonna head back there and hopefully we might be able to pay with our cards because we just don't have enough change or maybe they'll accept a bigger banknote and be able to give us change. Fingers crossed we can actually get on one of these trams. <laughs> We had success, we were able to go to the little office and we were able to pay with a 20 and then she could just give us a little bit of change. What we've realised is that you can pay, I think it's 15 dirham for some kind of card, I guess it's a little bit like an Oyster card, and then you can pay 6 dirham on top of that per journey and that card you can keep for life. So I suppose if you're going to be here for a little while that works out quite well, whereas we're not entirely sure how many journeys we're going to be making. So instead we've gone with this, that's a throwaway one. Now my reading is, is that you can use it for two journeys, so I, I don't know if it's maybe good for a return, a bit like our airport bus ticket yesterday and then you throw it away afterwards and so it means that you do have to pay an extra two dirham for every return journey that you want to make but if you're only going to make one or two journeys whilst you're here in Casablanca it works out to be just that little bit cheaper. 